this video very quickly just to make sure that everybody knows what I'm talking about with uh, the article that I'm writing about overhand steering. It's hand over hand, it's uh, very quick and basically the entire purpose of it is to ensure that you can respond fast in a situation where you may be about to lose control and you have to regain control quickly. It's very beneficial on ice, it's very beneficial on snow, if you're driving in the rain, it's very helpful in pretty much every situation of low grip because it's a technique which pretty much Sebastian Loeb almost developed single-handedly, like it's kind of his idea, it's his um, brainchild, but it works. Like, I haven't seen anybody else really using it, but it's a really good idea that if you analyze this driving, and I'll post a video to it, uh, really makes a lot of sense. So, um, without further ado, I want to actually to start with uh, the hand position, which is actually rather obvious when you think about it. Because, look! See? Not good. Steering wheel position. Set that first. Set it so that your legs have plenty of room, so that when you uh, have to turn the steering wheel, you have the space to do so. Set your steering rack high enough that you have the space to do so. In my case, I pull it up, use my knee to lock it in place a little bit, and then lock it in place with extended here, raised here, it's nice and close to me, and it's off of the lap. It's not in my lap, it's up, and I think that fits well so that I can pretty much sit like this. I sit close to the steering wheel with my feet are all the way down on the brake pedal and the clutch pedal right now, all the way down on the, on the uh, pedals. And then, I can still reach the steering wheel with the full wrist wrapped right around the steering wheel like that. When I'm driving, you should be able to see like this. I'm all the way against the back of the seat, but I've still got the ability for my hands to go opposite lock. Nice and quickly. Hand over hand is like that. Very quick. Let's say you're coming into a corner. It's a long hairpin. You're going to go like this. This way. If you have to understeer when you're going through this left hairpin, you can continue to turn it. Or, the other option, if you have oversteer, quick catch, quick catch, always, oversteer is nice and quick. I think you can uh, kind of tell how quickly I'm moving the steering wheel there, that's good. Still, this is the seating position, arms bent, and uh, everything is comfortable, I've got gear shift, handbrake, gear shift I can move first, second, all the way to fifth with no problem without reaching over. I'm still in the seat. Ideally that's how you want to set your car up. Steering wheel is nice and close, but not too close. The airbag is going to be here, but not too far that you're reaching with your arms because when you try to reach with your arms, hand over hand, this isn't comfortable. I'm squishing myself. When I pull it farther out, everything gets fast. Quick oversteer correction. Very quick. Every time. Um, basically, what happens when you're driving along like that, if you have the understeer, your arm will cross over slowly. Grab like this. Understeer, you push it a little bit more. Oversteer, you turn it a little bit out. You've got that control. You can easily 
understeer or oversteer, you've still got your hands here. I'm very tired of people turning the steering wheel with the shuffle steering. That is wrong. Let's say you do that. And then you're going to let the steering wheel go. You're losing control. You're lifting your hand off the steering wheel. That's wrong. Every time you do that, that's wrong. Every time, without failure. I wish I could uh, show you guys better with the camera angle where it is, but I don't think I can. You know, uh, make sure that it shows up how I want it. Start hands at nine and three, opposite lock. It's always from the top. And then every time you bring it back, if you're still paying attention to where the steering wheel is, it should be nine and three again still. See, if I didn't grab from the 12 that time, I brought it down. You shouldn't do that. You should do this. From the 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. It's not really ideal to do it that way still, but... 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You can really angle that in. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Bam. Back to the uh, starting position. fast, you'll hear the clapping on the wheel. That's good. That says that you're doing it fast because that is the way to do it fast. Because if you're doing it slowly, the clapping sound is less because your hand isn't moving as fast. You're re-grabbing the steering wheel. Basically what happens when you do that if you have a loss of control with understeer, quick, you can still turn it a little bit more or straighten it out. If you have to go opposite lock, do that again quickly. But it's not so much shuffle steering, like, you don't want to shuffle it, you want to turn it. difficult to explain, but I will do so. very quick, it's very, very effective, efficient, 
good driving. anticipating it and I was more focused on just doing the hand over hand technique for a demonstration in the video but I was able to catch that oversteer without hitting anything because the hand over hand is effective <coughs> I hope you can kind of see that people of uh, car throttle I'm hoping that everything uh, makes perfect sense and I'm hoping that you guys can uh, try it out sometime in a very safe spot, making sure you don't hurt anyone, making sure to be very careful. Hopefully everything goes well. Thanks for watching.